Anyway, there is fiqh dealing with this, especially from Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah. Uh, how to advise the ruler. But first of all, let me get to another point, which is that when corruption is unchecked and widespread, when the government in general, or, or at least powerful forces within the government, itself is spreading evil practices and beliefs among the people, the common people must be made aware that what is being taught by the government is incorrect. That it is not acceptable. It is not allowed for the ulama to be silent. Because if the ulama are silent, when the government itself is teaching concepts to people, then the people will assume that that is correct and they will accept that as part of Islam. In this case, the, ruler, the, the ulama have a duty to speak loudly in public and warn people about those practices. And alhamdulillah, in our time, many, many of the great scholars whom we know do that very same thing. As Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah said, Kufr, Fasuk, Asiyan, these three concepts, disbelief in Allah, uh, sinfulness and disobedience, they are the cause of evil and enmity among the Muslims. If a man or a group commits a sin and others fail to command right and forbid wrong, then it is a sin for them too. So if some of the Muslims are committing sins and we fail to tell them about this, then we ourselves are sinful. And this is one of the greatest fittings in our time and in times of old. That, and this is because the human being, as the Quran says, al insan is, al insan, a human being is, dalumun jahur, that he is unjust and ignorant. The human being is unjust by nature because he desires what is good for him and seeks to take that irrespective of what is good for others. So he does wrong to others because it will provide some benefit for himself. And the human being is ignorant because he believes that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not record his deeds when he is unjust and will not punish him for his sins. And that is ignorance. So we see what we want, we do what we want, and we ignore the rights of others. And Amr Ma'ruf and Nehya Munkar are part of the rights that others have upon us. It is your duty that if you see me doing wrong to advise me. And it is your duty if I spread evil among the people that you advise the people of this. If the ulama fail to advise the people in this case, they are not fulfilling their duty to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Are we going to break for a few minutes and for 15 minutes, inshallah, then we come back, inshallah. Uh, shukran, Zakhmullah khair, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Hold on, we need to just carry on for 15 minutes. Oh. Yeah, sorry. Okay, uh, he said there is 15 minutes. Okay, I, I, I missed that. Yeah. Okay, so I have 15 minutes to talk and then we'll yeah. go to Salah. Okay, okay. I'm sorry. All right. In this way, Ibn Taymiyyah talked that the fitna which were occurring in his time, the fitna in his time, fitna being the chaos in society, was caused by this. That this fitna was occurring between the Oma, between the ulama and between the Omara. Subhanallah. The same thing he describes is what we see today. Fitna going on between the scholars and between the rulers. And he said that this is the cause. It's the immorality and indecency that are allowed to exist when people do not command what is right and forbid what is wrong openly. But this is the cause of the fitna. This is why there are misunderstandings between the people and the scholars, and between the scholars and the rulers. Because we are not openly standing up for what is right and forbidding what is wrong. And this is because we seek what is good for us 
in this life and we ignore what is good for us in the akhirah we seek our hawa the misconceptions of our mind and shahuat the lust of our bodies and fill our stomachs take our salaries and our science is bought and we do not speak out when wrong occurs in society and therefore we are all sinning and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala punishes us all for these sins that are committed by people among us therefore it is the duty of the scholars to advise the rulers as well as the common people and before that is the duty of the ruler to seek the advice of the scholars himself actively he's not supposed to wait in the palace for somebody to come in he is supposed to actively seek out the advice of the scholars before acting unfortunately though those countries those few countries where the government seeks a fatwa for particular circumstances what they do is they take their decision and then they go make the ulama sign the fatwa to give them permission after they've already taken their decision this is not shura but it is the obligation at all times and places for the ruler ruler to consult the ulama to seek shura as it says in the Quran وَشَاوِرْهُمْ فِي الْأَمْرِ consult with him in the affair in Al Imran in verse 159 according to the great Mufassir Ibn Atiyah وَشُورَ مِنْ قَوَائِدِ الشَّرِيَةِ وَعَزَائِمِ الْأَحْكَامِ مَنْ لَا يَسْتَشِيرُ أَهْلَ الْعِلْمِ وَالدِّينِ فَأَزْلُهُ وَاجِبٌ هذا لا يختلف فيها أبداً أحداً Shura is one of the foundation principles of Islamic law and one of the indisputable laws. Whoever fails to consult with the scholars of religion, it is obligatory to remove him. This is something which is not disputed by any of the scholars. Allah praised the believers. Inshallah, we'll continue after Salaam Glasser, Inshallah.